Hey everybody, it's Michael from GetFitOver40.com and I've got another Back to the Basics video for you. This one's about muscles. So what we're going to talk about primarily is we're going to talk about the names of the muscles. We're going to talk a little bit about their key role, how they work. I think there's a lot of misconceptions. You know, people know that you need muscle to power your body. But other than that, you know, a lot of people are kind of in the dark as to how that actually works. So we'll talk a little bit about that. Um, we're also going to talk a little bit about um, how muscles kind of work together a little bit. So first off, let's talk about the names of the muscles. Just get that out of the way because I'll be referring to them periodically. So start at the top, we have our trap. This is often called the trap. I'm not going to necessarily uh, mention the medical name every time, but that's the trap. Most often called the trap or trapezius. Uh, then you have your shoulder muscle um, or deltoid, and there's all sorts of individual Name, individually named muscles in there, but we won't get into that. Uh, we also have, we'll, we'll keep working down, we've got our chest or pec, pectoral muscle, these guys. We have our lats, which are the big ones just under your shoulder that come down. There's actually a funky named one, sort of that's between the shoulder and the lat, kind of right in there, called the infraspinatus. I'm not sure if I'm saying it right, but I've got this little diagram. I'm going to put it on the website and probably bring it up in this video periodically as well. Um, so working our way down, I'll just stay with the body for now. We got your abs right in here. Then you have your obliques, or abdominals, abs, ob obliques. We'll stick with the upper body. We've got your biceps, triceps, biceps, tries. And then you have your forearm. There's probably all kinds of funky names for each part of it, the front and the back and all that, all the individual ones, but we'll just call this your forearms. Um, then we've got our glutes, your butt, I'll back up a bit, your glute, you've got your quads or your quadriceps right here, the big front muscle, you've got your hamstrings, which is the big one in the back, and then you have your calves. Oh, I've got my, got my slippers on again today, you usually don't see them. Anyways, they're comfortable. So those are the, the main muscles, okay? There's all kinds of individually named sub-muscle groups and medical terms for all these things, but we're not gonna get into that because it's, it's not what this channel is about. Um, all right, so the first thing I wanna go over is a very common misconception about muscles because a lot of times, for instance, when we're doing exercises, we have exercises called push exercises, right? And then you got pull exercises where you're pulling. So you have a push exercise where you go up, then you have a pull exercise where you go down. Same with your legs, you know, you're pushing away, and then you have like a pull exercise if you're doing a hamstring curl, you're pulling your leg in. So there's all these names, and so people kind of think that, oh, the muscle can push and it can pull. Well, the truth of the matter is the muscle does not push. Never, the, never can the mus muscle actually fill up with blood and push itself away. So when the muscle fills up with blood, if anything, it becomes, it, it can't pull as much because when it gets really full and pumped up, you lose a little bit of, of uh, movement. Like if that bicep were to pump up, I wouldn't be able to bring it in as much. It might only stop here. But, you know, before it pumps up, I have this huge range of motion and all the bicep does is pull. All any muscle does is pull. So for instance, it will pull by contracting. Let me put this down for now. So when the muscle, when I want to move my forearm in, I want to pull it in, the bicep pulls it by contracting, tightening up, and it pulls it in. Now, how in the world do you get your arm to go the other way, right? Does the bicep just sort of push, like push by filling up with blood and pushing it and expanding? No, it doesn't expand. The bicep doesn't expand and push. What happens is you've got a complementary muscle, like your tricep on the back, that's connected to, you know, right in this area, and it's using tendons and ligaments to pull your arm the other direction, okay? So pull with the bicep, pull with the tricep, always pulling, contract, pull, contract, pull. So you can see here the tricep will contract, right? Contract, bicep will contract, right? Showing the muscles off here. Anyways, same thing, like when you're pulling your shoulders up, your, tra your traps contract and pull. When you want to move your shoulders this way, this contracts. When you want to move this way, your chest goes from a long position to a contracted position and pulls. You want to go the other way, your lats and your back, and even your traps a little bit, will contract and pull your arm back, and your arms will contract, your bicep will pull your arm in. And you know the same goes with everything. You're always 
pulling with muscles. So I really wanted to mention that. The other thing, um, you know, getting into this whole pull complementary muscles. So we've got the complementary ones. There are imbalances that can happen when a person overtrains one muscle group. For instance, a lot of guys are guilty of training their chest. I want to have a big chest. It's good to have a big chest, right? Girls are going to see this and they're going to be so impressed. So they're going to make it huge, right? So they make their chest huge and all of a sudden their chest gets bigger and tighter and bigger and tighter. They're not even, probably not even stretching it ever. They're not even doing stretching exercises because they just want it to be big and puffy. And their chest gets tighter and tighter and tighter and pretty soon they're walking around like this. They got the ALS artificial lats. They got, and then they're basically what's happening is their shoulders become impinged and and they're, everything's forward and it's really imbalanced. They're going to have shoulder problems. They're going to have back problems. So you got to make sure that you you build the complementary muscle. You have to build your rear delts and you got to build your lats and all that and your traps to get everything to come back into a proper neutral position. You know, the same is true with pretty much everything in your body. Um, I'm guilty of basically not overtraining, but every time I do an arm curl, I'm pulling my arm in. Every time I'm doing deadlifts even, I'm trying to pull my arms, you know, everything, pull downs. I'm keeping my wrist in this pull down position, but I rarely, I rarely go the other way. How often do you exercise this where you're going, oh, I want to do this, oh, very rarely. Other than maybe some rowing, I don't really do a lot here, so it tends to get underdeveloped, and I've actually got an injury right in here from probably underdeveloping this part of my body, and so I'm trying to work that out. I'm, you can use things like rubber bands, really helpful. You'll see when you do this, you'll see that whole area moves around. That's basically by opening your fingers up with a rubber band. That helps that area a lot. And also doing this reverse sort of forearm curl, right, like that would also work those areas. So it's important to make sure that you always work on your body in a balanced way. That's why I wanted to bring that up. Um, another thing I want to talk about is just the positions that the muscle can be in because there's really three positions a neutral position that your muscle wants to be in and that position is when it's rested it sort of wants to go back to a neutral position and that's again you know if you find that you're like this it means your neutral position is too tight so you got to stretch that muscle out so you want to basically put it in a stretched position you know if it was your chest you want to stretch like this and that's the other thing your muscle can do is it can stretch your muscles can stretch they are required to stretch, otherwise they'll tear. So if you're not flexible, if your muscles aren't stretchy enough, flexible enough, you're going to tear really easily. You're not going to be flexible. So you want to make sure you stretch your muscles, and you, you, that's part of the working out is stretching. Your neutral position is where they want to be in normally, and then you have your contracted position, right? So there's three positions, contracted, neutral, and stretched for your muscles. So that, those are important phases of your muscle that, they, that you need to be aware of. I think that pretty much covers what I wanted to say. Understanding what the muscles are and how they work will help you with your workouts because you know if you want to develop, if you find that your forearms getting too weak in here, it's not developed enough, then you're going to want to do these, right? And you might go, oh, I want to build my forearm, so I'm just going to do this, it's going to build my whole forearm. No, it's not. You want to do reverse raises, kind of reverse curls with your forearm. And same with your, you know, with your bi with your arms. Actually, people think that your bicep is what makes your arm big, but what actually makes your arm big is your tricep. It takes up, I believe, at least two thirds of your arm. It's it's the main size. So if you develop your tricep, your arms get bigger. You can develop your bicep all day long, but you won't actually get size. You'll get a nice development there, but your arms don't really get bigger. The size comes from the tricep. I think that's pretty much it. Uh, that's enough information for one video. Um, Keep watching these Back to the Basics videos, and if you've got an idea for a Back to the Basics video, please send me an email, let me know, or put a comment in here and say, hey, I've got an idea for a Back to the Basics video, and I'll, uh, you know, I'll take it into consideration for sure. If it's something that I think is uh, you know, not too heavy duty, I don't want to make this channel too heavy duty. Um, so yeah, thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe. Check me out on Facebook and Twitter. Username is, well, I'll put, links, I'll put a link up in here what the username is, because it's different for both Twitter and Facebook channels. Anyways, thanks for watching. Until next time, take care.